Hey everyone, it's Chrono from The Headphone Show. Today with me, I have the 2021 revised Odyssey LCD X. Let's check it out. Okay, so the LCD X is part of Odyssey's LCD series, uh, Planar Magnetic Headphones. Now, of course, like the others in the lineup, it's meant to be a high-end music listening headphone, but where it does differ slightly from the LCD 2 or the LCD 3 is that it's also designed with professional use in mind. So think of uh, mastering engineers and studios. Originally, I meant to review this headphone a couple of months back. However, at the time, there were rumors starting to surface that there would be significant uh, pad changes as well as some other uh, revisions to to the LCD X as well as to other LCD series headphones, so I decided to hold off on that video until I got my hands on one of the newer models. And now I have. I had the one I have with me is identifiable as one of the newer ones since its serial number is greater than or comes in later than serial number 752700. Now, this video will focus mainly on my personal listening experience with the newer LCDX. It won't, I won't really be pointing out uh, many of the differences or what changed or making comparisons with the uh, older revision of the LCDX. If you're interested in learning more about what changes Odyssey actually made, I highly encourage you to check out the breakdown video uh, that Resolve made a couple of months ago. So if you're interested in learning more about what actually changed, there will be a link in the description down below to that video. But without further ado, let's get started. And as always, we'll start off by checking out the headphones accessories. The accessories included with the LCDX will vary depending on which bundle you opt for. With the 1199 Creators Package, you'll be receiving a 1.9 meter quarter inch to dual 4 pin mini XLR connector cable, as well as an economy travel case. On the other hand, if you go with the premium bundle, you'll get the same cable mentioned earlier, but you'll also receive a four pin balanced version of the same cable alongside a quarter inch to 3.5 millimeter adapter and a more robust professional travel case. Regardless of which package you opt for, I think that you'll be getting a good suite of accessories as you get just about everything you need to get going and to keep your LCD axis safe. Now, one thing I want to mention is that I love the stock cable that LCD headphones include. It's honestly one of the best I've seen in any headphone. I mean, it's it's sturdy, it feels premium, it's pretty much tangle-free and non-microphonic. Also has a comfortable length. I definitely don't think you'll have to worry about replacing the included cable anytime soon. Moving on to build and comfort, as we've come to expect from LCD series headphones, the build on the LCD X is simply top notch. The LCD X is composed almost entirely out of metal, which gives it a dense, solid, sturdy feel that, when paired with its precise craftsmanship, really sets the standard for how high end headphones should look and feel. It's worth pointing out that, unlike the other LCD series headphones, it's not using wooden rings, though I really do like the look of the black metal rings used instead, as they give the LCD X a more professional professional industrial look when compared to some of its peers. Undoubtedly something you'll appreciate if you like clean matte black aesthetics. Comfort hasn't always been a forte of Odyssey's full-size headphones, but I personally haven't had any issues when wearing the LCD X. At 612 grams, they're still a very heavy headphone and that will definitely be an issue for some users. However, in my experience, I found that the suspension headband, which was introduced by Odyssey back in 2018, and the new better compressing pads did a good job at evenly distributing the weight and keeping the headphones stable when wearing. Overall, I'd rate them as being very comfortable to wear with only the individual user's weight tolerance being the challenge that they must overcome. Okay, so now let's talk about sound. For its driver setup, the LCDX is still using the same ultra-thin Uniforce diaphragm as well as the usual 106mm planar magnetic transducer. One thing that did change, however, is that while it's it's still using uh, Odyssey's phaser technology, but it seems as though they've updated the physical arrangement of the phaser uh, waveguides on the driver. How or if this affects the LCDX's uh, acoustic performance, I don't know, but I did think that it was something worth pointing out. 
Just like the pre-update version I heard not too long ago, the LCD-X immediately enamored me with its technical capabilities, its snappy, controlled resolving, and even punchy. However, what really impressed me this time around was that its tonality was good. In fact, it was great. It's still a touch warm, but gone was the shroud that veiled the mint on the LCDX I tried a few months ago, with this new edition instead presenting a more vivid and realistic tonal balance. Alright, so let's talk first about the bass, and the LCDX has an excellent bass response. For extension, it delivers great performance as it easily reaches all the way down to 20Hz with no roll off to be heard. It's adept at surfacing the rumble of the lowest of bass tones, and for me, it just gives the LCDX's bass response a level of depth that, in my experience, I haven't found even ultra high-end dynamic driver headphones like the Utopia uh, are able to reproduce. Um, and this shouldn't be too surprising as it's a common trait amongst uh, planar magnetic headphones, but the bass on the LCDX is tight and precise. So needless to say, the LCDX has an outstanding bass response that is able to properly nuance and texture low tones. The only comment I have, really, is that under 100Hz, the LCDX doesn't have much of a bass shelf. If you're a fan of warmer low ends, or just want your sub bass to have a bit more presence, then you might be left wanting when listening to the LCDX. That being said though, this will not be an issue if you're okay with using EQ to add a bass shelf, or if your DAC amp combo has a bass boost toggle. Moving along to the mids, this is where this LCDX deviates the most, not only from previous versions of the LCDX I've tried, but from other full-size LCD series headphones in general. So, in previous experiences I've had with headphones in this range, I've found the mid-range to be unusually dark, and more particularly, they have a low upper mid-range harmonic presence, but that wasn't the case at all with this new revised LCDX. It's still not perfect, as there is a mild recession at around 4K that softens up or slightly takes away some of the bite from things like vocals or electric guitars, but it is by far the most organic and authentic sounding mid-range I've heard in a full-size LCD series headphone. Even when compared to other headphones around this price range like the Focal Clear or HD800S, the LCDX now holds its own with its stock tuning for the mids. It's really very good and I'm happy to see the change. Then for the highs, this version of the LCDX has what is probably one of my favorite treble responses. It leans perhaps ever so slightly in the warmer side for treble ranges, but it doesn't sacrifice any of the intricate overtones that I expect to hear whilst delivering a really smooth response that is never fatiguing. Additionally, it has exceptional upper treble extension with very good air qualities above 10k that lends vocals a natural glisten and cymbals an accurate splash and sizzle. Moving along then to technical performance, we'll as always start off by discussing resolution. And when it comes to detail retrieval, the LCDX really delivers top-notch performance throughout the entire frequency range. It conveys a stable and pristine image of the music. Now, this has always been the case with the LCDX. However, I feel like in older versions, its wonky frequency response and, and tonality really hindered it. It didn't really let that resolving quality shine through. However, now that um, it has a much more balanced uh, and better stock tuning, it really shows how well this headphone can perform when it comes to surfacing the intricacies in the music. And I mean, for internal resolution, it matches the HD100S and the Aria easily, and it comes dangerously close to something like my Verite Closed at a much lower price. For soundstage imaging and layering, it's not the most impressive I've heard, as I don't think that in this regard it is on the same plane as, say, the HD100S or the Aria, but the LCDX does have a very good and spacious soundstage presentation. Its soundstage width is about on par with the DT1990 Pro, and it does convey a good sense of distance. 
For imaging, I'm not usually a fan of the way plain magnetic headphones image, but I actually found the LCDX to be quite precise in its left-right localization, as it gave me no problems discerning the directionality of sound when, for example, playing FPS games online. Then, as for its layering, it performs really well with all vocal and instrument lines being distinct from each other and allowing you to peer into the music. Lastly, for technical performance, we have Dynamics. And this is, again, where the LCDX, as well as pretty much all the other full-size LCD series headphones I've tried, really, performs quite a bit differently from other planar magnetic headphones because it actually delivers a very good sense of punch and slam. Low tones are accompanied by a satisfying kick, whilst in the upper register, uh, there is a tactility that reproduces, for example, the pluck uh, of acoustic guitar strings or the strike behind snare drums. Very briefly, before heading into the conclusion of this video, I just wanted to touch up on EQ. Now, as I've mentioned previously and in other reviews I've written, my best experiences with Odyssey headphones have usually been after using EQ. However, I don't really feel like it's that necessary or at all with this revised LCDX because its tuning out of the box is very good. That being said though, I am an EQ enthusiast and I've always liked to add some EQ just to bring the headphones a little bit closer to my personal preference. So if you'd like to try out my preset, uh, there will be a link in the description down below that will take you to the headphones community forums where I've made a post that is essentially a compilation with all the EQ profiles for every headphone I've reviewed. All right, so now to wrap up this review, it should come as no surprise when I say that I'm really impressed with what Odyssey has done with their LCD X. For those who didn't shy away from EQ, the LCD X was already a great headphone because it offered exceptional technical performance at a price point that was considerably lower than a lot of its competitors. However, with this new revised version, I feel like Odyssey has really taken it to the next level because it now offers what I think is one of the most enjoyable and comfortable stock tunings in a high-end headphone. If the weight is something you don't mind, then I highly encourage you to check out the LCD X. At the price of $11.99 for the creator's package, it's an unbelievable and nearly unparalleled value in the high-end personal audio market. Odyssey really nailed it with this update to the LCD X, and I look forward to listening to similar benefits on their other full-size LCD headphones. Anyways, that is all for me today. I hope you enjoyed this video or found it useful. If you did, do consider dropping a like. And if you'd like to learn more about the LCDX or other headphones, I highly encourage you to check out the review section available on headphones.com. For more headphone audio content, stay tuned by subscribing to the Headphone Show on YouTube. And until next time, this is Chrono signing off.